Masha and Misha have finally arrived at Bilisi Airport after an uncertain month in Turkey. This young couple from Moscow fled Russia at the start of March with their nine-month-old son. Russia is now isolated. Our child has no future there. It looks like we're heading straight for a North Korean scenario or back to the USSR. All in the name of a crazy idea of going to liberate a people who don't need to be liberated from anything, who are freer than the people in Russia. Like them, tens of thousands of Russians have given up everything to flee in search of freedom under the Georgian skies. There are Ukrainian flags everywhere. That's the first thing we saw. Sergei is a 20-year-old designer. He also left Moscow soon after the start of the war. I couldn't have wished for a better change. All that Zed hell surrounding you in Moscow replaced by Ukrainian flags in Tbilisi. Down at street level in Tbilisi. He keeps running into people he knows. That's Mira. We were meant to rent an apartment together. Every day I bump into people that I knew in Russia. Two days ago I saw someone who once sold me a hat in Moscow. Sergei left because in Moscow he'd started to volunteer for an NGO supplying aid to Ukraine. He now works at the headquarters in Belisi. His job is to help Ukrainian civilians flee the areas his country is bombing. We created this map for our staff. It allows us to work out evacuation corridors for refugees. Thanks to this map, we can save people by finding the least dangerous routes. Irina Fatianova is one of the founders of the NGO. She was a former head of Alexei Navalny's HQ in St. Petersburg and left Russia in November. All organizations connected with Navalny, Vladimir Putin's number one opponent, currently imprisoned back in Russia, were declared extremist by the Russian state. It's just that suddenly everyone, a huge number of people, realized what we had been heading towards for a long time. Those who were already repressed understood that this was nothing new. Authorities gained ground by totally abolishing transparency and people's right to protest. They had to destroy all those in Russia who called for demonstrations, along with human rights organizations and the media. And I'm not even talking about Alexei Navalny's poisoning in 2020. The Russian state finally managed to dismantle the last independent media outlets in the country after the attack on Ukraine on the 24th of February. It's Tuesday evening, and Tirhan Ziadko and Ekaterina Kodrikadze are preparing for their weekly news program broadcast live on YouTube. We would like to be at home in our own studio. It's very hard. And it's also hard to cover Russia when we're in Georgia. He's the editor-in-chief. She's the star presenter of the opposition channel Dojd, which was shut down in Russia at the beginning of March. In Russia, there is now war censorship. They passed a new law according to which so-called discrediting of the Russian armed forces and spreading so-called false information about their activities are punishable by up to 15 years in prison. We decided that being free and safe while having the opportunity to inform would be more useful to ourselves, our families and above all our listeners than being in prison. Here are some memorabilia of my life from back in Moscow. I stuck them on the wall today. That's the plane ticket from my departure flight, some pictures of my mom and sister, and an old film. We're back with Sergei, who's sharing his Belisi apartment with three other young Russians. Their discussions revolve around administrative problems. Their mood, meanwhile, oscillates between uncertainty and hope for a better future. I feel like I'm nobody and living as if I was in a block of ice on top of a mountain.
The impossibility of going anywhere is pretty scary. I don't know. We might want to move. For example, I want to do a master's degree, either in France or in England. <laughs> the future for these ambitious young people may be uncertain, but they are ready to face it. They're sure of one thing. As long as Vladimir Putin sits in the Kremlin, there can be no return.